but as I mentioned, yeah, as our careers sort of like you skyrocketed through the organization, I got trapped in the Florida State League. You ultimately end up getting that call to the big leagues, which is something I like talking to everybody about that comes on because it's a call everybody wants. Um, I got close to, didn't get it. So I love talking to guys about the story. So walk me through your call to the big leagues, how it happened. Uh, was it a surprise? I want to know the story. It, it was a, a big surprise. We had a, uh, I was staying out in Sacramento and we were supposed to get on a bus at four o'clock in the morning and head to Albuquerque, I believe. Four o'clock. And so I'm at a host family's house and I set up one of my buddies, Sam Selman, with, uh, with their like brother. And so he's staying right down the street from me. We're carpooling to the field. So I'm set up to get a ride from him to the field at 3.30 in the morning. And for some reason, I couldn't sleep. And so it's 1230. And I'm like, this is going to be brutal. Get a call. And it's from a number in Oregon. And I'm like, man, well, I don't know anyone in Oregon. Why Why are they calling me with telemarketing at 1230 at night? That's just so annoying. And I realized I was like, they're not going to be calling me on telemarket at 1230 at night. And our managers from Oregon, and I don't have his number because I've been in the organization for five weeks. And I was like, <laughs> I was too quiet and too reserved to really figure that out. And so I was like, maybe I should answer this. So I pick it up and it's Brundy and he's, you know, kind of gives me the whole scenario. He says, Hey, you know, I wish I could do this in person. This is the call you've been waiting for your whole life, but you're going to the big leagues tomorrow. And I was like, start, I just kind of was silent and I didn't know what to say. And he goes, yeah, you're, uh, you're starting in left field tomorrow, hitting seventh. And there's going to be a car to pick you up to take you to San Francisco at seven o'clock in the morning. And I was like, oh, okay, this is, I'm going to feel terrible tomorrow, but all right. <laughs> so I call up Selman and he's awake for some reason. And I was like, Hey, uh, I don't need a ride tomorrow. He goes, why not? I go, Oh, I'm going to the big leagues. He goes, Oh buddy, I'll be right over. So he rides his bike over and he's like, let's, let's drink some whiskey. And so we have a glass of whiskey at like one o'clock in the morning. That's I got to go awesome. play at seven. And uh, those are, those are the moments that you don't forget, you know, like really yeah. good friends that just like, he has no, no reason to come over and show up, but he made that moment so much more special. Uh, you know, especially since my wife wasn't out there yet, my mom wasn't out there. So it was really cool to to have someone to share that with. So it's the middle of the night. What are your what are your phone calls look like? Was anybody awake for you to call and tell? <laughs> I I woke my wife up. She thought something was wrong. She was like panicking. <laughs> uh, my mom was even further away on East coast time. So it was like four in the morning there. By the time I got to call her, she had to try and figure out how to get on a flight. It was, yeah. it was chaos. So by the time you called her, it was 4 AM East coast and you were starting that night in San Francisco. That afternoon. It was a, it was an afternoon game. Did she make so it? it was one, yeah. They both, they both made it. They both <laughs> hopped on like 6 AM flights and got out there, made it just in time. They're troopers. Jeez. So it wasn't, too long into your big league career, Yaz, that you end up in Fenway, which is obviously such a special place for you and your family. And you hit a home run early in that series. And then the very next day was a moment that, I mean, it has to be so special to you, but your grandpa, Carl Yastrzemski, gets to throw out the first pitch back in Fenway. And you, as a visiting player, get to catch the first <laughs> pitch. How awesome was that moment for you guys? Uh, that was probably the coolest moment that I'll ever be a part of. You know, you always say when you're a kid, you know, could you imagine playing catch with your dad, your grandfather, your uncle, you know, you're someone like that on a big league field. And the fact that we got to do it before a game as the first pitch, uh, I don't know. It was, it was really special, really hard to describe. God, that's so cool to see. If you're watching, you can see it right now on the screen. So how how did this idea, like whose idea was it? Were you told like the day before that it was happening or was it kind of in the plans leading up to that series? Yeah, they uh, they asked me if I would want to do it. And I was like, you realize I'm not the one that has to say here. Like, <laughs> it's not up to me. Like, you either tell me I'm doing it or or we're not doing it. So I was like, if if my grandfather wants to do it, then – yeah, I'll absolutely do it. But uh, I thought there was no chance he was going to want to do it. But it was really cool. I know Avi, you never got to, to watch him play. Obviously, his career ended uh, before you were mm -hmm. born. But I'm sure throughout 
your life growing up, there were some cool moments that you got to be a part of because of him. Maybe they're at Fenway or wherever. What What's a, a memory you look back on as a kid with your grandpa that sticks out? Well, one that's not really necessarily with him, but because of him is uh, I missed my first varsity baseball game mm-hmm. because every year I would, you know, it was a tradition that my mom started when I was young, but she'd let me go to a half day of school and we'd go to the game for opening day. Mm-hmm. So, you know, it was just, I did it every year. I kind of told the school like, Hey, this is something that I do just to give you guys a heads up. Like I'm not just blowing school off. It's like literally a family tradition. And so it just happened to be the first day of our game, our first game. So we go into the game and I was like, all right, I'm going to go to the first half of the game, leave, make sure I can get to the game on time. And my car gets blocked in by Dwight Evans. And so (laughs) because we got to park in the player parking lot because my grandfather was there for some like pregame ceremony. So we got to do this whole thing. So I get to my first varsity game in the ninth inning and I'm like sweating bullets, like so (laughs) nervous. Like I'm going to get kicked off the team. All the guys are going to hate me, blah, blah, blah. I tell my coach, I was like, hey, I'm really sorry. He's like, you told me you were going to be here on time. And I was like, yeah, well, I was, but my car got blocked in and I, I couldn't move it. And he's like, what do you mean? Like, where were you? I was like, well, Dwight Evans parks behind us <laughs> and like they couldn't find him. And so they didn't have his keys. And he just kind of like his jaw kind of like slowly dropped. And he was just like, OK, like that, you know, I know that's such a ridiculous story that <laughs> yeah. I know you would make that up. And so he pinch hit me in the ninth inning and I popped up to short, terrible at bat, deservedly so, but it'd be, I was really thinking this story leads to the perfect ending of you pinch hitting and hitting a walk off for your <laughs> first <off>. high school, <laughs> but apparently, apparently that's not the ending it, that I was No, getting. it ended more, uh, more on the basis of karma, you know? Yeah, absolutely. 